One of the four pillars of OOP is inheritance. I'm assuming you likely already have a fair idea of what inheritance is, but the brief overview is that it allows you to create a class that inherits the methods and properties of another class, making them of the same ancestry. If the subclass does not define a specific method or property, PHP will look to its parent to find that given method or property. If the ancestry is several levels deep, it'll walk the entire tree to find out if the method or property exists before raising a method not found error. In this example, A is a base class, B extends from A, and C extends from B. The two properties on A are publicly visible, so that we can check their values, and are set to note by default. In the constructor, they are initialized to yep. The only method defined on A is a generic method, and this returns 42. B extends from A and has its own constructor that initializes setting to yep, but leaves another setting alone. It defines the do something method, which returns did something, and do something else method, which unsurprisingly returns did something else. C extends from B and in its constructor calls its parent constructor, which will be B's. It then sets another setting to tacos. C overloads do something to return something, and overloads a generic method, which now returns 9000. It also has a third method that returns the parent's class definition of a generic method, the parent's definition of do something, and then its own definition of do something. Below, we've instantiated each object and set it up to echo out a series of commands so I can show you what the outputs will look like. Expectedly, A and B both output 42 for a generic method, since B does not overload a generic method, and C outputs 9000 so, since it did indeed overload the method. B do something outputs did something, and C outputs its overloaded definition of something. C mix it up demonstrates roughly the same thing by ignoring its own definition of a generic method, since it calls the parents, which happens to be B, and then shows the same thing we just demonstrated with B, then C's definition of do something. The properties at the bottom demonstrate the differences in calling constructors. A has each property set to yep, since its constructor sets them as such. B only has setting set to yep, because it did not call the parents constructor in its definition therefore skipping A's initialization process. C has yep and tacos set because it does indeed call the parent constructor, which would be B's, and then changes another setting in its own constructor. So that was a quick run through, but hopefully you have an idea of what combinations you can throw together and what quirks you need to watch out for when extending a class. But what happens when you need to use the functionality that exists in two different classes? Some languages support multiple inheritance, but many developers consider it to be a terrible feature that can lead to several issues due to function collision and resolution issues, and it's a general mess of trying to figure out where your methods or properties came from. Some languages like Ruby include the concept of a mixin, where you can take a module and include it in any class, regardless of the base class, to essentially compose all of the module's abilities into the class. This feels much more useful overall, and is actually less work for both you and the language developer due to the complexities behind implementing multiple inheritance. In PHP 5.4, we have something similar named traits, but unlike Ruby's mixin, which are added at runtime, PHP's traits are added at compile time. Yes, believe it or not, PHP does in fact compile to bytecode before execution. Methods and properties get applied to the class they're used on in a way that does not disrupt the inheritance tree. You can almost think of it as a proxy between a class and its inheritance tree. If a method doesn't exist on the class, it'll check its traits, and then if it doesn't exist there, it'll proceed to the inheritance tree like it normally would. Multiple traits can be used at any given time, and if a method exists on more than one trait, PHP will raise a fatal error until you set up some conflict resolution using the instead of operator. Traits have a few other neat features to them, but I'll let you read about them later since I'd like to show you an example of how they work. At the top, we've defined two traits. Each has a method that will return its table name, and each has a method to return the results. At the bottom, we have a fake ORM, which just creates a new instance of the ID of whatever you search for, because what could possibly go wrong there? Our post class extends from the fake ORM, and then composes both traits into itself. It then sets the table name properties used in each trait so that it can use them. Then down below, it'll find the post with ID 1, 
then get the category table and records, followed by the tag table and records. When we run the script, we can see the output is just as expected. It acted just as though the traits methods were on the class itself. There's no magic involved, and I hope this removes some of the hand-waving from your view of traits. Categorization and tagging are two of the areas where I actually use traits a lot in PHP, which is why I chose them in particular. But they can help you solve many problems in a clean way when used judiciously. So now that I've shown you traits and inheritance, that wraps up this screencast. We'll go into more detail on some other inheritance-related things later in the series. After you're done checking out some of the other cool features of traits, pick back up in episode 4.